Hello everyone and welcome to another Multiple Apps Workflow tutorial with me, Eldrin from Logistil Amir. Today, we're going to finally be talking about render farming. Alright, so what is a render farm? Well, a render farm or render farming is a technique that uh, uses multiple computers to calculate out renders for uh, multiple frames. So let's say you have an animation in uh, Cinema 4D and you want to render it a little bit faster um, what you can do is you can use uh, computers in parallel to render out each frame of the animation the way uh, most render farm software works is you usually create a job on the uh, render farm or if you're using net render you can create um, a job in cinema 4d or a job in after effects and through different techniques in each software you can render out different frames. All right. So uh, this tutorial will cover render farming as well, but it also covers a lot of ground as far as networking is concerned. How to set up a network and how to configure it so that you can um, have a centralized workflow. And why is a centralized workflow important? Well, it's important in um, certain production environments because if you want to be able to render farm, you need to have a consistent naming scheme for all the computers to be able to access. Uh, this is very important in an Adobe and After Effects workflow, for instance, because if the files are not on a uh, network named area or if they're not on the same drive letter in Windows um, as the other uh, files are, then the render farm won't be able to find the exact files that you're looking for. Uh, links will be broken and frames won't be able to render. Uh, in After Effects, Premiere, Cinema 4D, and a number of other programs, there are methods that allow you to consolidate your projects, uh, making it easy for you to move old projects to a render farm, and making sure that all the files that are associated with that project are intact. So the software we're going to be using for this uh, exercise uh, over the next uh, couple tutorials. Uh, this is going to be a pretty big training, uh, so get ready to buckle down. Um, we're going to be using FreeNOS, and uh, the reason why I decided on FreeNOS as a platform for my render farm uh, was because of its expandability and because of its multi-platform nature. FreeNOS is based on uh, FreeBSD, which is a Linux kernel operating system, and uh, FreeNOS basically allows you to take any computer, um, plug some hard drives into it, and uh, share it out as a, a network attached storage, or a NAS. Um, Free NAS has a bunch of benefits. Um, it includes the uh, Apple protocol, so it allows it to talk to Macs. Uh, it also includes CIFS and uh, Samba protocols, which allow, allows it to talk with Windows. And of course, it also includes a, a NFS protocols allows it to talk to Linux. All right, so it can talk. It can talk to the three major operating systems, which means we can render farm on uh, multiple operating systems. For instance, uh, Katana, uh, the Foundry's new lighting and lookup tool, uh, only runs on Linux right now. So, if you're looking into that workflow, um, then you're only going to be able to run that on Linux, and you're going to need to be able to render out of Linux. Um, but you may need to perform operations on those files from Linux on Windows. You know, you might want to bring those files into Premiere to do, to uh, work on cuts, or you might want to bring them into After Effects on a Windows machine or a Mac machine to do uh, special effects after the fact, even after you've done your lighting and lookup. Um, you might have a hybrid network like myself, where you might need to run certain things on Mac, you know, uh, you might need to run, you know, some 3D software, whatever 3D software might be on the Mac, or there might be reasons why you might want to use a Mac for uh, certain purposes, and so you might need to access, you know, your files on the Mac. Uh, vice versa, uh, you know, on Windows, you might need to access your files for a number of different reasons. There are a lot of apps that run on Windows and exclusively on Windows. All right. Um, FreeNOS also has expandability. FreeNOS allows you not only to derive network storage from your hard drives, but it also allows you to configure iSCSI 
uh, interfaces. Uh, what iSCSI allows you to do is it basically allows you to create a uh, network hard drive um, that's accessed like a real physical hard drive. Um, and then you can share that hard drive space out and have another server, like another FreeNAS, see it and actually use that space. Um, in other words, the uh, server that I've built uh, recently only has eight hard drive bays. All right, so my max space uh, these days, uh, three terabytes times eight, uh, about 24 gigabytes of space is available to me. Um, and that's my max space, or not 24 gigabytes, but 24 terabytes of space is available to me, and that's my max space. If I need more space, um, I can actually create another free NAS and share that free NAS's space out as an iSCSI device. And then on my original FreeNAS, I can attach that as extra space and continue to use my original FreeNAS as my management. And um, we, I can just keep doing that, add infinitum, add infinitum, and thus create like a huge network of just uh, of raw hard drive space. So it's very expandable. Um, FreeNAS also has a very, very, very uh, low... Uh, hard drive requirements so are very very low computing requirements um, as you'll soon see in uh, some of the next tutorials here um, I've actually used a really 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 low baseline um, a cheap baseline too so you can actually build this for very very cheap and uh, have network attached storage available to you alright and so with that introduction out of the way um, let's move on to the next tutorial where we're going to be talking about building this beast and um, getting the right um, hardware uh, together. All right, so see you guys there.